Hello YouTubers and welcome to another episode. Today I just finished off a lovely 56.5 90 minute on the ERG with a lovely average of 122 which puts me firmly in my aerobic zone, my UT2 zone, my steady state zone. Today, after making the video yesterday talking about UT1 or doing UT1, people asking why are you doing UT1 or what even is UT1, and the previous video of talking about going slower to go faster, today I'm going to be as honest as I can be about my opinions on sort of UT1, UT2, steady state training, what you're probably doing wrong, and why you should try doing something a little bit different. So, first we kind of have to explain what is UT1, what is UT2. Well, UT2 is steady state. There's loads of different names for it. It's basically what you do for long periods of time. You should be able to have a reasonable conversation, not two or three words here and there, but not quite full sentences, but you should be able to comfortably talk to someone if they ask you a question. That's really simply. If you go by heart rate, for me, 60 to 70% heart rate, maximum heart rate is what I go off of. There's going to be loads of different stuff out there. Some people say 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, but for me, I go from 60 to 70% for my UT2, for my steady state. UT1, on the other hand, is actually more intense than UT2. Even though the number is lower, it's not lower intensity, it's higher intensity. So UT1 is where your heart rate zone, for me, I'm taking it to 70 to 80% heart rate. And this is where your body starts to produce lactic acid. So in UT2, you obviously you always produce lactic acid, but you don't really want to increase the amount you're producing, maybe slightly, but then in UT1, you're definitely increasing the amount of lactic acid you're producing, but not going so high where it becomes a training session of dealing with lactic acid. The idea of UT1 is allowing your body to increase efficiency of pumping blood around the muscles around the body, not just sort of dealing with lactic acid and hoping for the best. So both zones, UT2 and UT1, have very different benefits. But this is the issue, I think, with a lot of zones, no matter what it, the zone actually is, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100%, so for UT1 and UT2, for me, 60 to 70% UT2, 70 to 80 UT1. Well, that 70% marker is the same as the top end for one and the bottom end for another. So what if I was to do a UT2 workout at 70%? What zone am I in? Am I in UT2 or am I in UT1? Well, that's kind of where the issues, I think, with sort of overtraining, with ego training, a lot of different things come about where you're just not quite getting the full benefit, the full target of that zone. You never really want to be in between two zones because you're not getting the benefit of the zone lower and you're not getting the benefit of the zone higher. Obviously, there's going to be those workouts where it's just a bit of a muddle, but for my UT2, if I'm sitting at 70%, I'm not getting the full benefit of the UT2 because I'm pushing into UT1, and I'm not getting the full benefit of UT1 because I'm pushing into UT2. So it's a kind of mixed zone where you're not really using your time as efficiently as possible. So say I was going for UT2, and then I'm sitting at 70%, yes, I'm in the UT2 zone, but for example, the difference between 60 and 70% is 20 beats a minute. So 140 to 120, 20 beats a minute. So imagine even if I went to 65%, 10 beats lower, for say this 90 minute workout, that is a huge amount of energy that you save by doing 10 beats lower for say if you were doing a 90 minute erg, an hour erg, whatever erg or whatever workout it is in general. Say you're doing a workout in UT2 from the top end to the bottom end. That 120 heart rate for me versus 140 heart rate at the top end is a massive, massive effort difference, but at 120, 125, like today I was at 122, I'm pretty much fully working at UT2 aerobic gains. When I'm at the 40% or the 140 heart rate, I'm, yes, I'm working my aerobic capacity, but I'm spending so much more energy to do that and also producing more lactic acid pushing into UT1. The same thing goes for UT1. Obviously, since it's more intense, you have to reduce the mileage, but if I'm in UT1 and sort of not 70%, maybe 75%, the difference between 140 and 160, say I'm at 145 average, well, I'm working 
at UT1, and then say I went to 160, that difference, that 15 beat difference in the heart rate is a huge amount of effort. So imagine for me, I'm sitting at 125 for my UT2, and say 145, 150 for my UT1. I'm saving energy on the UT2, but I'm actually getting roughly, pretty much exactly the same, roughly exactly, roughly approximately, the same cardio aerobic gains in the steady state, so 125 versus 140, but I'm saving an outrageous amount of effort that, that I can put into other workouts or just have for the rest of the day. Whether it's going into a UT1 workout, whether it's going to the gym, whether it's doing a harder workout tomorrow or later on in that day, I can then use that energy in that workout and then I can really focus on hitting the right zone. So say I did a first session in the morning like this, a 90 minute steady or maybe an hour steady, 125. Then later on in the day I have a, not today, but for example, a one minute on, one minute off by 10. I'll be much, much fresher and able to hit really high intensities much easier and hit the right zones, especially if it's above UT1 and really smash those zones if I'm a little bit more fresh from the morning workout that I've done at say 125 heart rate. But if I did the UT2 at say 140 heart rate, which is still in the UT2 zone, and then go on to those one minute on, one minute offs, I'm going to be more tired. I'm going to be struggling a little bit more to hit those zones, to hit those splits. When you smash a high intensity workout, it just helps with that motivation. It means to me, it's like, well, I've just done 100K this week at low intensity, and then I've completely smashed out a, a 500 workout. That is like, well, I'm doing the right thing, I'm continuing. But when you get to the that hard workout and you're too tired to do it and you're you're knackered, you don't want to bother, and you're just sitting there, oh, I, I just, I'm struggling to even just hop on the erg here. And that is the difference between sort of UT2 and UT1 and why you shouldn't be just doing, oh, well, I'm in the zone, I'm doing either UT2, UT1, whatever it's steady state, whatever you want to call it. It's a case of doing it in the right way and thinking about what those workouts do to your other workouts. Whether you are taking your workouts literally as in doing two workouts a day, whatever it is, or five workouts a week or whatever, you could be saying, well, if I do this workout this morning or this evening at a lower end UT2, I'm saving energy for going out this evening, not currently this time, I'm saving energy for baking later on. I'm saving energy for going to work. And so I'm not gonna be sleepy and tired at work, but you're getting the same gains in those workouts, which I think is the biggest thing. And people really struggle as well with, and this is this is what I struggled with. I Everyone struggles with it at some point, I'm pretty sure. UT2, at first, with heart rate zones, I've mentioned this before, is really hard to let go of your ego. Really, really hard to say, okay, I've never done heart rate training before, I'm gonna do it, and then say UT2, you go to 65% of your heart rate, and the splits are, or the speeds you're getting on the row machine are slow, are really a lot slower than you're used to be seeing because you haven't been doing UT2. You've been doing higher intensities for your entire sessions. And then you back off, you see, oh, well, I'm backing off 10 splits. That means I'm not doing anything. My heart rate's sitting at 140, 135. That's not doing anything for me. And then you go back to what you were doing because you wanted to see those higher, those faster splits. But if you're patient, given it enough time, you will get fitter. Your heart rate, your the, the body will get fitter, stronger, given enough volume, given enough intensity, either way, low or high, and given enough consistency, your body will adapt and you will get fitter, stronger. And it's not just about the rowing machine, it's about everything like that. If you do it in the right way, then you will get better at whatever it is. And that's, I think, what I really realized lately is sort of the, the real balance between intensities. And that's quite difficult to get right for it because every individual is different. My heart rate is going to be different than your heart rate, my 60% is different than your 60%, my UT2 might be 60 to 70%, but your UT2 might be 65 to 75. It's, it's variable. And your max heart rate as well is going to be different than mine. And a lot of people have been asking how to calculate that. Well, I took it off of many max efforts and basically taking, I've, I've seen 200 on my heart rate peaking 
And so I've given, okay, well, it's going to be, if anything, a little bit higher, say 202, 203, and then taking my... Uh, ha and then taking my max heart rate off of that. But for you, if you don't want to do a maximum test to see those very high heart rates, because you don't always necessarily see the high heart rates because you may not necessarily be ready for those workouts. If you want to try and calculate your max heart rate, I recommend pretty much going on the internet, going to Google, Googling max heart rate calculations and taking 10 different calculations. One, it might actually be the 220 minus your age. Take that as one. And then there's about, 4 million different websites taking heart rate calculations, including sort of weight, including gender, including height, including arm span and all that into the calculations. So if you get 10 different numbers, take an average of those 10, it's going to give you, it might not be 100% accurate, but it's going to give you a close number to what your max heart rate is. And then you can go off of your heart rate zones because having your max heart rate can be quite difficult to get without sort of a lab test. But say your max heart rate is 202 and you do the calculations and get a rough estimate of 201 or 203 or 200 or 204, those zones are only going to vary about one or two beats. So if you're sticking in the zone fully, not just at the top end or the bottom end, you're going to be fine anyway. And so that's kind of what I'm thinking of UT1, UT2. I really think that the, I'm not just saying everyone should do heart rate training, but I really think the intensities of training should be really looked at regardless of what you're doing, running, biking, cycling, anything. Just having a, a think, am I doing something to too intense of a level? And sometimes I was I was a culprit at university at, um, and at the start of my rowing career, I would just do everything as hard as I could and it felt fine. It did feel fine and just eventually I got ill a bit more and more and more and more and that led to getting my tonsils out and glandular fever and running myself down so much that I couldn't recover anymore and that's where that whole thing about if you're at the instead of being the top end of a zone you're just a middle to low end of the zone you're going to be able to recover that much better so that will be it for today's episode of Yam Squad a little bit of a chat on a subject that I really want to get out there and just help the Yam Squad and see what you can do and especially in these times of isolation, we, not everyone obviously, but a lot of us do have a little bit more time to get a little bit more mileage. And if it's at that right intensity, you're going to be able to do that. So hopefully you can do that. Let me know in the comments below if you think doing these intensities are the right thing to do. If you've been thinking, maybe I've been doing it too hard or maybe even too light, I'd be really interested to know in the comments below. Or maybe I'm just completely telling nonsense and you could have a completely different opinion also let me know it'd be great to strike up a conversation and as always yam squad remember to subscribe if you haven't already hit that like button and i will see you this is friday already we've made it to the end of the week already oh yeah i'll see you tomorrow on saturday for another episode of the vlogs oh yeah